Do you want a cheap, fun, and easy way to turn any of your camera lenses into specialized macro lenses? Well, that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Three inexpensive ways to get started with macro photography. We're gonna start by talking about the bizarre, then we're gonna move on to the rather interesting, and then the most simple ways to turn your gear into specialized macro gear. Macro photography is great because you can do it from the comfort of your home, you are surrounded by thousands of different things that could be interesting when shot in macro, and it's really cheap to get started as well. That's why I love doing it so much. So we're gonna start by talking about a reverse mounting ring. So this here is the cheapest camera I could buy a couple years ago, it's the Canon EOS 1000D, and you'll see that this camera is not actually set up correctly. This mount here is the EOS mount, and it's supposed to go on the other side of the lens. So it should actually be plugged in like this. Now, unfortunately, while shooting a landscape photography course a few years ago, this flew out of my camera bag and snapped off, so it doesn't work. However, there is a way to turn it into a macro lens simply by changing the way you mount it onto your camera. So instead of mounting it like this, you turn it around like that. And the way we do that is with a very cheap, I think this costs $8, a very cheap reverse mounting ring. What this is, is on one end, it's going to be the Canon EOS mount or whatever camera brand you use. And on the other end, it's going to be the filter thread for the end of the lens. So in this case, a 58 millimeter filter thread. We simply attach this filter thread onto the filter here, onto the ring. And then we take the EOS mount and we mount it onto the camera like so. Now we've got it set up the wrong way round. So although that would take some really, really weird like landscape photographs or portraits, because the optics are all turned around, it now works as an amazing macro lens. So I'm gonna start off by taking a regular photo with a normal um, full frame equivalent of this. So this is, this is a 24 to 70 instead of the 18 to 55, and it's a full frame camera. So I'll take a photo quickly. And when you're shooting macro photography, you wanna get as close to the subject as you can while still keeping it in focus. Now, unfortunately, you have to deal with something called a minimum focusing distance. And on this lens, it's probably around 30, or I think it is actually exactly 30, uh, let's see, it's 38 centimeters. So that is as close as I can get and still keep my photo in focus. So I'll zoom all the way in here, but you'll see that the image we're gonna capture is not even close to being called macro photography. And the distance of that 38 millimeters is measured from the focal point to the camera's sensor. So it's not from the end of the lens, it's that distance there. And that's about as close as I can focus. And although we have a nice pretty photo of a flower, it's not macro photography. So let's say I reverse mount this lens onto my camera, which is what I'm going to be doing here with this camera. Let's see the results we get here. Before we move on to take the photo though, I wanna talk about light sources. I have the luxury of being in a studio here, but macro photography does require quite a lot of light. And there's many options for this. You can use bright daylight in some situations. You can use flash photography with a flash on the camera. You can use an off-camera flash. You can use all kinds of weird and wonderful lighting. Because I'm in my studio here, I'm just gonna use this cheap LED Polaroid light. I think it's about 30 bucks or so. And that's gonna give me a nice, even and consistent light. And to make it a bit stronger, I'm gonna bring it really close to the flower like so. That's gonna give me lots and lots of light to play with. As I go to take a photograph now, you'll see that I'm getting very, very close to the subject, much closer than I could get with this camera and lens. And you'll also see that I'm shooting at 55 millimeters. So although that's technically zoomed in when you're taking a photo and it's mounted the correct way around, it's actually slightly zoomed out in comparison to the 18 millimeters. 18 millimeters, I'll show you one of those as well, but it is incredibly extreme macro. I don't think it serves the purpose very well with the subject that we're shooting. So I'm gonna take both and you'll see the comparison. I'll start with 55 millimeters.
And now I'm going to switch to 18 millimeters, and you'll see how much closer that is. And you can see that the depth of field there has turned into basically nothing. You get really cool close-up details though. So both serve a purpose, but that's the power of this $8 adapter. You can really take great close-up macro photographs. Let's move on to the next cheap way to turn your lens into a macro lens. So I'm using my 50 millimeter here on my 5D Mark IV. And the reason I'm using the 50 millimeter is not because it's a particularly good lens, it's a great lens, but because it's a terrible macro lens. The minimum focusing distance is about, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's 45 centimeters, which is worse than the 24 to 70. And the magnification factor is 0 0.15, which means that everything I take a photo of when I'm at the minimum focusing distance is only appearing 1 15th of its size on the camera's sensor. So an awful, awful macro lens. So I'll take a photograph with this lens now. And you can see that is certainly worse than the 24 to 70. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use extension tubes. Extension tubes work by increasing the distance between the camera lens and the camera sensor. I won't go into all the technical jargon here, but just know that it makes for great macro photographs. So this little adapter that I have here, it costs, I think, $10, and it comes with electronic transfer points, so I can still use autofocus, I can adjust the aperture of my lens, and it comes in three different sections. So I've got a 31 millimeter, a 21 millimeter, and a 13 millimeter. And I can add these all in, or I can add just one in, or two of them, and I can do what I like with them, really. I'm gonna add all three of them in. So I'm adding 65 millimeters to my 50 millimeter lens here. So I'll take this off and I'll mount that like that and that like that. Now, when I do this, I'm quite careful with the, the lens now because that's a lot of money hanging on a bit of plastic. So I always make sure to hold it steady. But we'll now see the difference between the 50 millimeter on its own and the 115 millimeters with the extension tube. So before, my minimum focusing distance was 45 centimeters, and the magnification factor was 0.15, which is really lousy if you're doing macro photography. The magnification factor now is 1.5. So that means that everything that I'm capturing in real life here is going to be 50% larger rather than one tenth of the size on the camera's sensor. So let's go ahead and take a photograph. And there you can see a dramatic difference. That's just $10 and it will turn basically any camera lens I own into a macro lens. It just goes to show that although you might own a macro lens, these cheap accessories do a great job of turning a regular lens into a macro lens. For this final example of turning a regular lens into a macro lens, we're going to be using what is essentially a magnifying glass that goes on the end of your camera's lens. And it's a pretty simple piece of kit, but it works quite well. This is actually the most expensive accessory I have here. I think it was about $60. And all it does is it clips onto the ends of your lens like so. And I'm actually gonna take a photo first using my macro lens. So this is a 100 millimeter lens, and the magnification factor is a one-to-one -one ratio, which means everything that I shoot will be life-size on the camera's sensor. I'll start by taking a photo of my macro lens here so that you can see what a regular one-to-one -one ratio macro photograph looks like. And that's as close as I can focus. And now I'm gonna take the magnifier, clip it on the end like so. You'll see that by using this simple clip-on adapter, I'm able to get quite a bit closer and magnify that macro photograph. So that's three powerful tools for turning any lens into a macro lens. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out the links in the description below. I have an entire course dedicated to macro photography. And if you like this video, you're going to love that course. 
I've taken some really tremendous macro photos in my time with the most basic and cheap gear that you can find. It really is possible. So thanks for watching. Also, if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. We're releasing new videos every Monday at 12 p.m. London time, so you can get your fix of photography every single week. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.